quality of speakers that went before me. Uh, I went through a couple of identity crises throughout this morning. And uh, I just want to commend the speakers for the quality and the passion and the drive. It is absolutely inspiring, and I thank you guys for that. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm going to try and, and bridge the gap. Uh, so this morning with Beatrice, we started with questions about who, who are we? Who am I? And with Lebo, we're, we're being thrown into the future, completely projected into the future. And uh, it's, it's a conflicting space, right? Because we're living in, in the African continent. This future exists um, for the privileged and for the educated. But we need to make it accessible for people who are less privileged and less educated. So as Talma Sustainable Development, uh, we're a company that was founded in 2011, and our mission is to build and design viable business assets that are community-owned, and to de design and implement these at scale. So this is our mission, is to try to build new assets, to create new assets that create work, that create enabling environments where people can flourish, where people can start engaging a new future for themselves. For us, it is all about people, though. Um, we started out with a super entrepreneurial type drive uh, where it was all about doing business and creating these assets, and it's about creating asset value for the poor and taking the market uh, to people who are less privileged than to rural Africa and to leverage the top of the pyramid in order to create asset value for the base. And all of that sounds great, uh, but in our engagement, we realized that it's really, really all about people. We can be super fancy in our language and we can be very intellectual and we have to be, right? Um, we have to really think about the future and project ourselves into the future, but, but that's a hard thing for someone who's really hungry. So I don't wanna go on, on focusing exclusively on the poor and the needy, but that is a gap in Africa. Because the fear I get when I listen to Lebo is that what is going to happen to the majority of people who are so hungry and who are so distressed and who are locked in a mindset of just survival on a day-to-day -day basis? What's going to happen to that crowd who, who doesn't have access to everything? So sure, they will have access eventually, but we're talking billions of people. How do we, how do we address that gap? So, and this is where I'm super grateful for government and for all the initiatives that are still focusing on skills and that are skill, still focusing on developing basic skills because it's needed as a, as a projectile. It's needed as a little bit of fuel, as an ignition to just light the fuel in someone's heart. It's still needed. We can't just divert completely away from that. And for those of us who have access to a complete future, and I'm not knocking Lebo, that's not the point at all. It's, I'm super and completely inspired. I'm just saying that still on the ground, we need to address a couple of realities. So in our work, we've created a couple of large-scale businesses, mostly focused on agri. It wasn't intentional, but we ventured out to say, with a little bit of time, we can find an entrepreneurial opportunity, a business opportunity, in any area that we can scale, raise investment for, and implement that, and drive it to be profitable, and let the community own it. That was our mission. And we've done it successfully before a couple of times, but we've learned such hard lessons on the road. And um, so, so when we started, we learned a couple of lessons. And uh, our first question was, how do we create an environment where people could ignite their imagination, where people could start dreaming again, where they can start imagining a new future for themselves, and where they can learn and grow into their full potential? Because we walked into a very tough barrier, and that's when we, we're working in rural communities or in deeply impoverished areas like deep city, city spaces. We often walk into the barrier that people are really lost in a, in a sea of hopelessness. Uh, they've lost hope. A lot of people have lost hope because they're locked into this sort of system, and that's all they see. And quite often also then when we read the news too much, we are exposed to a highly divisive media that influences our minds even further. 
and it sort of creates these barriers, these mental barriers in our minds that doesn't allow us to think much further. So first of all, we said, all right, in, in order to allow people to grow safely and to reach their full potential, we need to create very strong support structures. If we look at the stats in South Africa, first of all, we can start looking at the stats in the world of new businesses, nine out of 10 fail in the first year. 90% failure rate is extreme. Then we look at the failure rate of projects, of developmental projects in South Africa and in Africa, and the failure rate is immense. And so in our, in our venture, we've went and we've gone out and visited a number of initiated projects large scale with multi-million round investments in them. And we come across a graveyard of failed projects all over South Africa. And it's in, incredibly disheartening, but we needed to just face the brutal facts. Why? Why does this happen? And quite often, unfortunately, we set people up for failure. We give them some training, invest some money into infrastructure, but in the end, we don't really acknowledge what it takes to build a business, what it takes to become an owner or an entrepreneur or to suddenly manage something. For us who are fortunate enough to operate in management roles or in formal workspace, we know that our backgrounds have played a massive role in that. And if we were lucky enough to really have exposure and be exposed to economic realities and to uh, positive and healthy social environments, and then to go to a good school, and then to go to a good university, we still know we can reflect on everything it took to make us competitive in the work environment. And that's really intense. How hard do you have to work at university, and then you get into a formal workspace, and how hard do you still have to work and learn and adapt the whole time to make you effective in that space? Anyway, so those facts made us realize, all right, we need to create a super strong support structure which allows people to grow into their space and to do so safely. And when they make mistakes, they don't face total failure in the process, right? But that wasn't enough really to ensure success. We engaged deeply on the ground and started, started sitting with people. So I look like this today, but I like having my fellies and my jeans on having some kumboti with someone on the ground and just listening and hearing and, uh, and be educated. And what I learned there was that the hearts aren't ignited. And in that level, that's where it really needs to happen in, in South Africa and the African continent is that we are service providers, but we have an obligation to really serve people at the heart level. We have to meet people where they're at and first create a space where people can safely download the realities and safely face and acknowledge the realities of their challenges. And that creates a bit of headspace for us to look forward into the future again, for people to start dreaming. And I believe it ties into the conversations that we've had this morning, is that if we can start dreaming, if we can allow and assist someone who's really stuck in an environment where, where it's really hard to see a different future, a different outcome. If we can ignite a bit of passion, if we can ignite imagination and allow people to dream a little bit and then create the support structure for them to grow into those spaces safely, I believe that can kickstart an exponential learning process. And that's the second part we learned, is that we need to inspire people to keep learning and learning and learning and learning. And you don't need a university for that. Learning is about observing. It's about facilitating exposure for yourself. It happens through reading and it happens through exposure in the form of conversation or whatever it is. And once we can generate and kickstart a process where people can keep learning when they're absolutely passionate about learning, where they can passionately engaged and ask questions, hundreds and hundreds of questions to keep developing the database in our minds. The super processor of our minds can really start generating a new future for us. And this applies equally to people who are locked in, 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 in poverty and it equally applies to people who are in privilege. This is my message today that as service providers and as servants, in a spirit of Ubuntu, we need to share the privileges that we have. 
and really meet people on the heart level where they're at and generate the learning process, inspire people that they can, through the processes of their mind, generate new perspectives. And the more we do that, the greater our perspectives come, the stronger the inspiration is, and the stronger the drive is to walk out of our circumstances ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my message, and I really appreciate you having me today. Thank you very much.